Hey everybody, so today I want to show you how to do this a smoke blast with different colors of smoke mixing together. Um, by the way, over the weekend I uploaded all of the project files for almost all of the tutorials. So if you just go under any video, I'll be showing you. you can click the link, um, get the project file here and it will take you to Gumroad. And I've basically uploaded all of the project files for you guys for free. So you can follow along and this applies to this tutorial as well. So you can just go in the description and get the project file for this. So let's go into Max and make this from scratch. So first let's go under customize unit setup. And this time make sure that you're in, in meters. So metric meters and one unit is one meter because we want this to be pretty large scale. So now we need some kind of an object which is irregular so that we'll get this nice plumes going in all directions. So I just created a torus knot under extended primitive. So you just you can just drag that out and make it look something like this. Maybe a little smaller and make sure that it's sitting pretty on the ground. And now we can just go under Phoenix, Fire Smoke Sim, Auto Grid and just drag out a grid like this. Let's make the ground solid. So say jammed on Z minus and then click adaptive grid set by smoke, which means that if the smoke happens to reach the edge of the grid, the grid will automatically expand so that none of the edges will be clipped. Now you can click on the torus knot and just go to object properties and make it not renderable. And then right click again, go under Phoenix FD properties and make it not a solid object. And now we can just go under helpers, Phoenix and make a PHX source and add this object as our source. And now we want to add some noise. So let's add 10 for noise enable RGB. So this RGB will control the colors of the smoke. So we need to create a map um, to tell Phoenix which colors we want to do. So just go into your material editor and click on the map slot here and select a checker. And now you can apply that to our torus knot and click on this show map in viewport so you can see what it looks like. And we're going to go under the modifier panel and select the UVW map. Some parts of it will emit white and some black right now, but we're going to change the colors. So make color one some kind of a dark gray. And actually, let's make this map something lighter. So let's make it maybe a lighter color just so we can see it better. So something like that and copy the map and put it into the RGB slot here and say instance. And now we need to just animate the outgoing velocity. So to give it that blast that initial blast. So I would just set the outgoing velocity to 2500 and set a keyframe and then go to frame 10 and set it back to zero. And so now it goes from 2500 to zero over 10 frames and you could do just just maybe three frames for a quick blast, but I just set it to 10 and let's set the temperature to 300. And then we can play with that in the settings more if we would like the smoke to rise. But I just left it at 300, which basically means um, it basically means zero gravity. It's not going up or down. It's just sort of hovering. As you can see here, um, the smoke is only moving based on the initial velocity, but it doesn't have any temperature. So it's not really rising on its own. So under my grid settings for my final resolution, I did about 20 million cells. And then under dynamics, you can set the quality to 80, which will just give you more of these um, details in the plumes and the smoke will live a little longer before dissipating. And then we need to go under output and select the RGB output grid channel and set the path of where you would like to simulate this into. If you would like motion blur, then make sure you check velocity. I rendered this one without motion blur, but it's something you can do. And then under preview, let's uncheck RGB, uncheck particles and just select the RGB preview, which will show us a nicer preview of the smoke. And then under rendering, we need to go under volumetric options 
and set the color of the smoke by RGB. And then for the smoke opacity, you can do something like 0.95. Um, the more opacity the smoke has, the more larger scale it will appear. So that's good for that. And now let's just run a test simulation and make sure that everything's working. All right, so I lowered the resolution just to get this preview out to you guys faster. But you can see that everything is indeed working. The, the colors of the smoke are mixing together. So at this point, you would just raise the resolution and let it sim through. And for my rendering, you can just go under V-Ray and select V-Ray Plane. So we can just give this a random V-Ray material just to have some kind of a ground. So let's make it maybe almost black, like a dark gray, and apply it to that V-Ray Plane. And then we can go under Lights and do V-Ray Sun and just drag out a V-Ray Sun like this. Say yes. Um, raise this up. And then you can go under rendering environment and just under exposure control, give it a regular V-Ray exposure control, which is the quickest way to get something that looks pretty good. And now if I just hit render, you can see that this is basically my preview. I just added some contrast in After Effects and that was it. So super simple, you can put any kind of map in here so you could do a fractal map you could do something more abstract with colors and then you know you could maybe just make this a gradient map so that the top of it would be a certain color and the bottom would be a different color and that way you could control um, the color of the smoke on the z-axis and stuff like that so definitely lots of interesting stuff you could do hope you guys found this little tip helpful if you did as always I would appreciate a thumbs up Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.